Hello YouTube, this is Cabby for Cabby's Corners. Today we're going to be going over my Warhound Titan build, which is, I would say, maybe 25% complete, maybe a little bit less. Um, going to go over some of the, the tools that I used and why I used them. Um, and also some of the things that if you were encountering, that you might account, encounter in some of these bigger Forge World builds. Now, first off, all these parts have been washed in soap and water. I used Dawn, the non-scented stuff, just to make sure. Because of that, that process, they use the extract apart from the mold. It does leave a little bit of a residue and can create some issues when trying to paint the model. The paint does not stick. You'll notice it does like a, a water on almost like a wax surface uh, effect. It just kind of starts dissipating. It's real hard to get paint to stick and then you know it could ruin your model if you don't know what you're doing or you have to repaint that area so let's go ahead and start off with some of the tools that I've been using now most of these tools um, that you will be using you use on regular models some of them you see that you usually don't there are other alternatives it's just I had this stuff and it made my life a, a bit easier when uh, doing some of the processes uh, that I'll be going over in a little bit. So why don't we go ahead and we're going to start with the electric, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> tools. I have a Dremel tool and also just an electric uh, drill slash screwdriver. I didn't really use the screwdriver bit too much just because of the fragile nature of it, but I did use it to drill holes in the joints of the legs by the hips and also the, um, the, I would call them the two knees that the, the uh, Warhound Titan has because it's got the, the weird reverse leg. So um, I did use the Dremel tool on lower settings with a, a real coarse bit just to get some of the uh, mold uh, lines and extra uh, resin left behind off. Uh, like I said, the drill I used just primarily to make holes for the legs to give the uh, joints more strength because as you can see on the actual Warhound Titan itself it's got chicken legs that thing skipped leg day every day so I uh, wanted to make sure that those joints were uh, nice and uh, shored up for I know it's not a ton of weight but you know if I'm moving it around I just didn't want that to happen it breaking uh, next you'll see in the, the background there it actually is a um, uh, a butane torch, I want to say that is, a propane torch, sorry, that I used just briefly. I didn't use it on a lot of stuff, but if you could look at the carapace right there, you'll see at the top there that there's a, uh, a little bit of a uh, mark there uh, that was really badly bent that I could not get the normal ways of just a heat gun or water to to be able to warm it up enough where I can mold it and also I was trying to more so mold it on there so I wanted real quick real high heat yet again very careful because of what it could do to it it will burn resin very quickly and it will melt resin very quickly because it's the high temperature so you want to if you do end up using that make sure it's at far enough distance that that won't happen and the process takes a little bit longer than you would want it to. So if you want it to be really quick, maybe give it a couple extra seconds to hold it a little bit further back just so you don't destroy the part because there are no replacements. You get what you get. So in front of that you have a, a assortment of different, I call them needle files. I have a small uh, clipper, uh, scissors in there. Uh, this is a bunch of random little tools that I use for whatever projects. It's in a mason jar, it keeps them all nice and neat. Now, uh, I have a hacksaw there. I use a hacksaw and a, uh, yeah, I use the hacksaw for, you'll run into pieces. I'll show you where. But they have this much extra resin. You can see there, that's what was actually part of the piece that you had to cut off. So it's a very big part, so you're not just going to be able to clip that off. Um, you're going to have to use some kind of saw out there. There's different types of saws out there. Like I said, 
it's what I had available to me so it made it easier for me and I just made sure I was careful I actually um, sawed it off to a point where I still had to sand it down to make sure that I didn't go too far uh, in front of that you'll see two sets of two different types of screws now the uh, one type of screw you see here is the wood cabinet screws I use those for what you would call I guess, the ankle joints I, I had to cut them down because these were a bit long but I used those for the ankle joints and then I, had, I picked up these three and a quarter screws deck screws wood screws whatever you want to, yeah decks and deck and exterior screws for the actual hips themselves I'm gonna kind of get a close-up of where I'm talking about so where I am talking about for those three and a quarter ones I've used the deck screws there and then for the smaller screws the uh, back out a bit right there those are the joints that I use those smaller screws for so um, that's why you see those screws in there you could use regular pins I just in was uh, a little fearful that it might be a little too weak I did use some pins I had some thicker pins that I was using but I ran out of those and I'm like all right what else do I have that I don't have to wait for a long time because I don't have a, a true hobby store real close to me so I'm like oh I got screws so I'll use that um, most of the parts on the table have been cleaned up and ready to be assembled a lot of them have not I'm still kind of building it and seeing where I want to go um, because it is a very intricate model I don't want to build the whole thing and then paint it if you are building one of these I'm not an interior painter guy. I don't like painting interiors of tanks, especially for a game. Like, it's a game. Not a big deal for me because it's supposed to be a, uh, a just a representation of something I need in the game. It's not supposed to be a display piece, in my mind. I, I do try to paint them so they don't look like crap, but there's my mindset. Whereas this model here, it's probably going to be more of a display piece. Um, when I do a more close-up look at it, I'll, I'll show you what I mean about that. Probably only going to use it once or twice, maybe bring it out for a scenario thing, but it's mainly just going to sit on my sh shelf and look pretty. So that's why I decided, okay, this is one of the few models I will actually paint the interior on because it's more going to be a show-off piece. Um, that's why also I added a bunch of things. You can see um, there's a character there. She's supposed to be like a pilot. Uh, non GW character but she, she has no representation in the game it's just like I said for the diorama purposes I just wanted I envisioned somebody by the legs or between the legs just standing there like hey this is this is what I'm bringing to the fight you see a destroyed rhino I or actually Razorback sorry uh, or Pred whatever it is gonna be it's gonna be painted chaos that's gonna be destroyed chaos vehicle so they don't have Razorback so that'd be a Pred in the uh, in their list um that was given to us years back i believe we got it from the battle bunker here in illinois when we still had it it was just part of a here the scenery got too destroyed we're not gonna do anything with it so if you guys want it you can take it we took it we put it in a scenery and i'm like oh well you know what let me use it on that that'd be kind of perfect for that so i'm in some ways i'm okay with destroying models uh, for scenery as long as let's say you didn't spend a lot of money on them or it's extra parts or whatnot because if you take a look right here I actually this came with four what you would call shin guards uh, two that looked like this and then two that looked like this I don't know if they represent anything. I really like these here, so it's going to get two of these. This to because I'm not a very ornate painter. I can paint this to look really nice. I can't freehand paint. So I was like, all right, I'm going to use those anyways. So in some of my other models, you'll see that the first uh, shin guard armor plate is actually been chopped up and put on other models' bases as just scenery. You know, you got a real big base. I 
I like putting something on there because it just looks really too open. Too much dead space if you just, you know, sand it and flock it, you know, paint it. And then you just got this big base with nothing else on it, just a model. I'm not saying that's, if that's your thing, that's cool, that's fine, that's me. I just, I would, I like to see something a little bit extra just to kind of give it a little something to look at while you're looking at the model. So, okay, from the screws there, you'll see, I think that's Bob Smith's um, super glue or uh, CA glue with uh, what's called zip kicker. Um, I don't highly recommend using a lot of the zip kicker because it does, I think people have said it does weaken the bond a little bit. But when you're trying to get a piece to stick and you just need something real quick, you know, just a quick spurt on like the outside of where you're gluing, kind of nicely uh, shores up that piece a little bit so it can dry and cure on its own where you don't have to sit there going, oh, is this going to dry? Is this going to cure right? So I, I only try to really use that on um, non-weight bearing pieces. So um, on the legs, you'll see a lot of these hydraulics there. You know, if I have issues with them, you know, gluing, I'll use it there. But like the joints on the legs, I usually try not to use that. I just try to let the glue itself um, uh, do its thing, do its job. You know cure and set on its own so why don't we uh, uh, now take a moment give me a moment uh, and we'll be right back and I'm gonna actually go more into detail of the actual model itself other than everything else okay guys um, now we're gonna look at the model more in depth of where I have I went to Michael's and I got myself a display board um, it wasn't expensive I think it was um, I don't remember like eight bucks maybe I mean when you think about you know the model itself I believe it's 11 inches by 9 inches is the measurements of the display board not squared of course because the corners have been cut uh, and given that nice little molding look so you, you don't have that whole 11 by 9 to uh to work with but it does give you a nice big um, surface to kind of play around with things uh, as you see i um got these uh, sandbags right here a big bag of sandbags i don't remember from what company but it's just one of those model companies that we had that if you're looking for um um was it uh 132nd or 124 scale, um, whatever it is, uh, sandbags, they'll come up. They're actually individual sandbags, so I kind of uh, placed the first row to kind of see where I wanted to do, and then I just kind of, when I started putting them together, built them up to where I wanted to look, and like a fighting position that it was coming up upon. Um, if you look closely next to, let's zoom in, next to the tank right there, um, you could see pen marks. Those pen marks are basically before I actually started building the model on the base itself. I kind of set everything down. Uh, I put the tank down. I put the row of sandbags to see if I liked it. I put a base there to see if I wanted where the the one uh, human miniature is. I put the feet down. I'm like, okay, I kind of like where that was, and then I just kind of quickly traced it out so I remembered when I put it back uh, together and started gluing stuff I knew exactly where it was everything was supposed to go now this model I don't because I pinned it I don't know if I pinned it correctly if you look this foot here is not correctly straight with um, the leg but it fits on the base I probably could have done a better job don't know if I was rushing or whatnot, but it's just one of those things if you're building this model to be aware of that it, it if you just look at it real quick you might not notice it but if you know you take a look it's like oh wow he's kind of pigeon towing the one foot okay well that thing is just totally glued on there there's nothing I can do about it but moving on from there now this model here that I um, 
I uh, added on. She is a non-GW. Sorry about that. I'll just pick her up. Non-GW model, but like I said, I don't really think anybody will mind because it's just there for display piece. She doesn't add anything to the model or uh, to the character stats or whatnot. But I did, um, you'll see right there, I did make her um, able to be magnetized so I can take her on and off. So if I'm in playing a game and that's not at home, I can leave her at home so I don't lose her, don't break her because she is very thin uh, and fragile resin compared to the rest of the resin that you see there. Um, going on from there, um, I'm going to take the top of the model off. As you see right here, this is one of the parts I was talking about that I needed to uh, cut this off because there's a big chunk of resin. I think I threw away that piece of resin and then I had to sand it down to get it to fit right. So. Um, also, when you, you're working with resin, sorry, I don't no, have center. When you're working with resin, you probably want to make sure you have some kind of respirator, because I don't, uh, as Zero found out, resin is a small particle that will stay in your lungs. So you, you kind of want to use something when you're you're sanding or cutting and stuff like that. So just take a precaution. But you'll also yeah. see here that I had to splice a couple parts together because the way they, uh, that I had them positioned. It wasn't supposed to be positioned that way. So I had others like this one here. I totally clipped off what you call the hydraulic rod that goes in and out. And I just added a little extra piece right here just to kind of make it fit all together and make it look like one coherent piece. I'm going to probably here do a little bit more sanding on that just to kind of make it look nicer. And because um, this is one of the models that you really don't want to skimp out on because. You're going to set it down and people are just going to you know, want to look at it. So it's going to be your center, centerpiece. I think all in all right now, including, let's say, the washing and where I'm at at this point, I'm about seven hours into the build itself. Um, now that might be due to me because uh, this is actually fairly clean, my workstation. It's usually a freaking mess. So... And also going back and forth, like trying to find um, the part back here that I had on the base. Like I had to go find this. I'm like, oh, I know I had one of these um, um, shoulder pads from uh, Night Titan laying around that I wasn't going to do anything with, so I had to go find that. I uh, had uh, this used to have a piece of plastic card that mimicked this, so I had to go find this, cut it out, make it fit on there. I mean, and like I was saying, it's also, it took me some time and um, to figure out how I wanted the feet position. So th that's all included with the time. It's not just me putting the pieces on and whatnot. But like I said, going back, when you're dealing with big pieces of chunks of just uh, flashing, it, it takes you a little bit of time. So make sure you have some time and space for it so you're not putting it away, taking it out, and doing uh, whatnot with it. Um, so, we're going to get more into the interior. Some stuff is glued, some stuff is not glued in this. So I'm going to take the top armor off. And now these back pieces I'm going to take off because this is not glued. Yeah, it fell on the floor. It'll be fine. Um, so, like I have some gapping here because everything was warped. But I'm going to just put some green stuff in there. Um, so you look inside there. And you can see uh, it's pretty really, it's really detailed there. Um, I did not glue in this piece because I knew it would make it real difficult. So I'll probably end up gluing, uh, painting this piece separate and then gluing it when I'm done. But and get a shot inside there of a control panel of some sort, probably for the uh, the engines or the arms themselves or the legs. Not entirely sure of the lore behind it. I just thought it was a really cool model. Like you see, see some more gapping right there. Needs to get green stuff. And I, I usually don't mind. Like I said, a lot of times I just um, just glue these things shut. So. It's not that big of a deal, but this one here, I do want it like a display piece. So I try to use Zappa Gap where I can to fill in, but 
and as you can see, how they get real close. Um, I'm gonna need the green stuff there if there's not a part, because the instructions aren't the greatest. So, and I was saying, use low speeds. Kind of went a little overzealous with the um, um, the Dremel tool, but once I put this um, this part on, I'll be able to green stuff that and kind of make that look pretty. So, give you a shot of the the armor there. So it's a really heavy piece of resin in the. I don't know which one but basically this came like this so that's basically how it came out of the mold so you see there you have to cut that off to be able to do anything with it so, so this was um, at least one two about six pieces seven pieces not too I don't remember exactly seven pieces to make this part of the body plus you have the care pace armor and then also going into some more detail you have the little dude the Sotor that this is the arm mount so this is supposed to mount that so I'll give you a more outward look no, I will be magnetizing these because, uh, as you saw in the original one, I have the plasma blast cannon, the uh, the Vulcan Mega Bolter, the I believe it's called the Infernal Cannon, and um, that one there's the Turbo Laser, I believe. I'm not too sure about the name there, um, but yeah, that one still has to get built. These the other three that I showed you they basically come pre-built that's the only one you gotta uh, this one here uh, that's the only one you have to actually put the uh, the cannons on I'm not too sure if they're warped we will have to take a look at that so also looking at some more detail here like I said there's a lot of detail on these I'm not gonna glue these guys in because here's the what you, this is the, what you would give the uh, the dog face I guess you would call it so there's the 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 head of the Titan but you know this little guy comes out I want to paint him make him look really nice really cool looking so and then each one of his pilots let me see if I can get that to focus yeah each one of his pilots come out so I'll be painting those like I said it's this is gonna be a really big display piece um, I'm excited that I'm actually getting to work on it early. I didn't think I was able to get to be able to work on this until July, but I did. Um, I did get to work on it a little early. I stopped because I decided, you know, this to start making videos for Zero's hobbies. Now, going back into where I used the screws, I'll show you the exact locations where I did that. Now I think I put this in the wrong place, but it works. Oh well, it's not a very uh, a detrimental part. So this cover, it is actually a piece onto the leg joint here, and I decided to make this video after I glued this on. But there's a screw that goes into here. Oh, clumsy me, I am a klutz. And then there's the little screw that I was talking about there, and this one has a bunch of different pins in it. And then we turn it around. And the same thing on this side. There's a, a big screw that goes from in here into the waist. They would call it that section there. And then this screw. And then, like I said, I had pins, but don't have them anymore. Um, not uh, done putting stuff on the base. I need to sand it. And the, I'm going to think uh, we have some of the old school uh, palm trees. I think I'm going to put one of those on there just because why not. So. So, guys, um, gals, elders, um, that is my Warhound Titan. Not even close to done. So, um, thanks for listening and have a great day.